So whether you're at home joining us or at the city center in Minneapolis, sitting with Shelley, or here at the retreat center, we get to have this very profound and simple discovery. There is a body, a sitting body. It's really a coming home. Such a nice way to begin our nine day retreat in this very earthy way. There is a body, a sitting body, a breathing body. And out of compassion, still okay, of course, to make adjustments, to take care of the body, to do our best. Of course, it won't be perfect, but to do our best to find a good sitting posture for tonight, for this 30 minutes or so, because we care care enough to pay attention and adapt and adjust and, and to invite relaxation, invite a softening. Exploring if we can feel safe here. You know, how safe can we be here in the body, the breathing body that feels like this. And we have the ears that hear. There is this hearing being known the sensitivity to hearing, so natural, unavoidable. Hearing is like this. Sensations of the sitting body, the breathing body are like this now. And whether the eyes are open or closed, there's visual experience being known as well, of course. Just the bare simplicity of seeing, being known. We're not trying to suppress our interpretation of what's being seen, but it's just to know the light, the color, the texture of the visual experience is just what it is. Just getting familiar with the natural sensitivity of the body and mind. Seeing, hearing, sensing sensations in the body. Maybe to some degree smelling and tasting as well. However neutral that might be right now. All of this exposure is what it means to be human, the sensitivity through the five senses.
and of course also sensitive to mental activity, including the the feeling heart, the qualities of the heart right now, whatever that might be like. How's the heart? How's the heart feeling now? And can it be okay to be close, to be interested, without needing to fix anything, or simply knowing the heart's like this, And thoughts arise and then pass. So ephemeral a thought is. How nice it is not to have to direct the show or even have any needing any expectations, but just to relax with this exposure, this exposure through the five physical senses and the sense of the mind, you know, awareness of mental activity, art activity. And we'll begin now some silence, 15 or 20 minutes or so. And just explore if it's okay, okay enough to trust this exposure to the present moment, to what's moving in the body and mind, coming and going naturally. This is how it is.
So just a reminder, the basic task is keeping the present moment in mind. So it's really the effort of being interested or the effort of remembering to recognize the present moment. And so as a, if you want more structure, you can just work with these six sense gates at a relaxed pace, like a minute just reflecting, oh yeah, sitting body, breathing body, feels like this. And in a sense, just sink into the sensitivity, the bodily sensation, just as it is. I'm not trying to get anywhere or make something happen. Just being intimate with sitting, breathing body. And then move to seeing or hearing, smelling, tasting. And then to mental activity, heart activity, just as it is for a minute or so. And then again, just moving through the six sense gates can be a powerful way to build our practice learning how to be interested in the basic elements of what it means to be human, the sensitivity through these six ways, six sense gates.
And remember, when you acknowledge that thinking is being known, it's a very light touch. You're not trying to suppress. You're just acknowledging that that mental activity of thinking is being known. There's the thinking, and then there's that wisdom that knows that there's thinking being known, that reflective knowing that there's thoughts. It's not a judgment. It's just interest in the nature of the mind itself and the activity that's coming and going. Same with the qualities of the heart. Just like it's the same with all the five physical senses. Seeing, even when the eyes are closed, there's visual activity being known. Hearing, sensing the body sitting and breathing, smelling and tasting, just as it is.
and taking the last minute or two and just again remembering there is a body there is this body here sitting breathing body this sitting breathing body feels like this now In this very straightforward, simple way, we practice being peaceful with conditions. Peaceful with the condition of our sitting body, breathing body, as it actually is right now. Not in conflict. So in a way we're harmonizing with the reality of the sitting body. It's our way of being a good friend, okay, one moment at a time. With the body, with seeing and hearing, with smelling and tasting, with thinking and the heart activity that's moving intimate and friendly with all that's moving. How good it feels to put down distraction and put down conflict for a moment at a time. Be peaceful, clear and peaceful with conditions. as best we can. And we let that be good enough. Yeah, and I, it's just nice to acknowledge what an act of courage it is to be here, whether you're at home joining us or at the city center, practicing at the city center this week, these nine days, or here in this beautiful little secluded spot we have near Prairie Farm, Wisconsin. It's really an act of courage. It's a minor miracle that human beings have the great good fortune to put aside some time for something like this. And that we have these teachings, we have the technology to bring us together. I mean, it, all these, we have the intention, we followed through with the intention. Any number of things could have gotten in the way, you know. But just to tune in with some gratitude about, yeah, just what a privilege it is to be here together. And of course, it won't be perfect. I remember, I don't know if it was Bhikkhu Bodhi, but one of our elder teachers in this early Buddhist tradition here in the West, we call it Vipassana, our insight meditation often, but coming out of the Theravada Buddhist lineage. But uh, I think it was Bhikkhu Bodhi, one of our great translators and teachers, a Westerner, said uh, the important thing is that we begin and that we continue. <laughs> you know, and just wherever you feel you are, you know, not that we really know on the path, but it's just we're getting wiser about one moment at a time how to plant, 
seeds for wisdom and compassion, seeds for awakening. And we have to be kind of nimble and creative and fierce and uh, humble to just one moment at a time find our way back to valuing present moment awareness, making peace with what we find, because sometimes we find a mess. <laughs> you know, the quality of our particular mind and heart in that moment may not be a pretty sight, but there it is. This is how it is. So one of the, <clears throat> some of the people, you know, in the group have done many, many retreats and some of you are relatively new. But what we all learn one way or another is part of what supports deepening in life generally and with our Buddhist practice is uh, becoming wise and skillful at creating safety. And one of the things we're doing, especially these first few days, again, whether you're at home or whether you're practicing at the city center or here, we're creating community in order to have more safety. And it won't be perfect. And it kind of breaks our hearts in a way, you know, Shelley and me and Gabe and here, uh, Matthew and Joan who are staffing our retreat at the retreat center it breaks our heart a little because, uh, you know, we come, we show up with our lived experiences, our differences in all so many different ways, age and class and race and ethnic backgrounds and educational levels and how well our body is handling and how healthy we are and all of the ways that we're different and we all show up and you know, although we've been doing these for a long time and following a lineage of you know lay people creating a practice space, and although we aspire that this is a welcoming, safe environment for everyone, we realize it isn't always that way. So let us know, especially after the retreat, but during the retreat as well, how we can support you so you can do the work here. And of course, some of the responsibility is you, like how you use the form and use the instructions that Shelley and I will be giving and, and gave as well. Use the instructions and make them your own. You know, there's a teaching in Buddhism about uh, we have to be humble and open enough to hear something so we can then some of it, not all of it, you know, some of it will stick and we'll be able to regurgitate it to ourselves in the middle of a set. Not that we're endlessly thinking, but some instruction, some pointing out, some little pithy phrase or word will come to mind, you know, peace with conditions or there is a body. <laughs> and then it will become real for us in that moment, not words, but something direct, some new way of connecting with what's always been here. In Buddhism, we call that Dharma or Dhamma, the way it is. So that we're not so dependent on the mind's conceptualization, you know, our ideas about things, but we're having, we're learning to have a more immediate and direct experience. We're not at war with our thoughts or interpretations. We're learning how to use thought ideas to support intimacy, presence with reality, you could say, or Dhamma. And uh, basically, there are three supports that I want to talk about for about 10 minutes. Then we'll take a little break. And then uh, Shelley will speak for about 20 minutes and lead us in the refuge and precepts chanting and guide us for a short sit at the end. We're aimed to end around 8.45 Central Time and uh, so people can get a good night's sleep tonight. 
So these are three supports you can just keep reflecting on, coming back to. So I already mentioned the first one, but I'll just say a little bit more. You know, we have our community, and we're doing this very personal practice together. Again, regardless of where you're practicing, even if you're at home, we're doing it together. And it's good to remember that it can be support, the safety of our belonging. And those of you who are at the city center and here at the retreat center, where we'll be bumping up against each other, but those of you at home too, with people you live with or the four-legged friends you might be living with, you know, (laughs) it will be supportive and sometimes there will be some rubbing and scrubbing. And uh, yeah, we just want to be aware of how we, uh, you know, remember the basic values of kindness. And that means that includes ourselves, you know, being forgiving. Because it can, initially, if it's one of your first retreats, it can feel awkward how we move through space. Like, am I walking too fast? Am I walking too slow? Am I looking mindful or not? We can actually, the container, the retreat structure can make us self-conscious sometimes. Even when we're practicing alone on retreat, like uh, those of you practicing at home, it's our own projection, like am I living up to what a Buddhist retreat should look like or act like or be like? So it's good to be able to remind yourself, oh, it's like this now. You know, whether you sense that as doubt or you sense that as confusion or you sense that as judgment or sense that as trying too hard or faking it or, you know, however that feels in that moment, just realize, oh, all my job is only to begin and to persist. And to begin means to simply acknowledge this is what's being known. And we have all of those around us to model this, you know. And later, uh, Shelley will talk about the precepts that really helps kind of us create that, that beautiful container. And then the other thing that really is a support that you can come back to over and over again is just the sense of seclusion. And that's kind of what we're creating tonight and maybe even to, to tomorrow and Those of you who are practicing at home, it may take a little bit of time (coughs) to, and within the context of your own home, to create that sense of seclusion. Of course, those of us here at the retreat center, we have the real advantage because you drove, you know, some distance, some of you from the East Coast, all the way to landing here. And that, (coughs) it's a huge symbol in our heart that we got ourselves here, out of city energy, into a quiet space, into a space that has so generously been developed just for this purpose. And the same to some degree for those of you at the city center. So this quality of seclusion, and ultimately it's seclusion from our usual duties and responsibilities. And you want to, from time to time, it's like good medicine to remember that you've made that commitment to set aside, like some of us are sons or daughters or partners or friends. We have these responsibilities and those responsibilities. And we have done that amazing thing, which is to say, not this week, not for these nine days. I've put that aside. And it's a, you know, it's a, it might even be a bit of a grieving process for some of us not to be looking at the news, know what's happening in the world, know what's happening with our friends. But that seclusion is, is, uh, is like a superpower for us. It reminds us of our commitment. It really clarifies that we want to get to know Dharma, Dhamma, we want to get to know the way it is, this activity of the body and the mind. So we have purposefully simplified our lives. Now, you know, 
we're still in community, those of us here at the retreat site and each of us in our own particular places. We have our own particular dance that we're still doing. So it's, it's just a simplification. It's not like the messiness of life has somehow been removed, right? We'll have our own versions here, wherever we are. But, it's, but just to appreciate that, and especially those of us here at the retreat site, the natural elements, the sky, the views, the trees, the plants, the crickets, to really use those natural elements to sense that gift of having put down so much of what usually sits on our shoulders. And that's why uh, Shelley will talk about noble silence later and that we're not reading and, you know, because we're, we're kind of uh, giving time to be with the more elemental level of our experience. And that's not easy, especially in the beginning for the first hundred lifetimes <laughs> or months and months of practice, depending. But it takes a while to really get a taste. Oh, yeah, this is good medicine for me. This is onward leading. I trust, as hard as it is, I trust where this goes. So this is that seclusion um, that you can tune into, however that looks for you. And then, so we have community and that harmonizing together won't be perfect, but it, it really helps. And we're not doing it alone. And we're walking in the footsteps of our elders who have done this before us from the Buddha on down. Buddha's before this particular historic Buddha that we know, wise folks who have come to understand their heart deeply and could articulate it enough so people could learn from them, right? So we're not alone. We have the seclusion that we have this kind of retreat frame. We've put aside our duties and responsibilities. We have the sacred time. And then the third piece that is our great support for this time, we have the teachings from a very wise person and our many elders along, you know, through the centuries that have just, right, because it, it gets replicated. The insight, the awakening, the seeing things as they are, gets articulated. Other people have the same insight the Buddha had, the same depth on and on, generation by generation. Think about how many generations through so many different cultures. And the teachings are still really pragmatic and functional and available which is itself pretty amazing. So I'll just talk about it in the real brief way. And then for the next nine days, Gabe, Shelley, and I will be, you know, coming at the same basic teachings in different angles, highlighting different aspects. So basically we're bringing this as much as we can, the stable present moment awareness to different frequencies of our life. So the gross part that we're bringing awareness, this wisdom and awareness, the stability of wisdom and awareness to is just how we're relating to each other, you know, navigating space, how we're relating to the objects like our toothbrush and our bowl and our drinking glass and our shoes and putting our clothes on and taking our clothes off and making our bed. And so that's the level we call sila. It's really that sort of ordinary gross way of relating to the external world. We're bringing that stability, that interest, not judging, not trying to do it right, be a good Buddhist, look right, but just be curious. Like, oh yeah, reaching to touch and flick the light on is like this, you know, or whatever you're doing in any moment, just to be interested in how the mind is relating to what the body and mind is doing as you're doing it. And then we have sort of more subtle, it's like the ecology of our own heart, like how's the mind doing? <laughs> how's the heart doing? You know, what's it, what's it doing? <laughs> 
and just caring about that. Just like you want to care about your living space, like did you put the trash in the trash can or did you just throw it on the ground? It's the same thing like how's, how's it look inside? You know, like what's moving, the quality of the thoughts, the attitude, the mood. And again, not about controlling or judging, but just caring, being interested enough to notice how the mind is doing. And is it, whatever it's doing, is it helpful or not? And then the most subtle level is the level of wisdom. So we have gross as sila, then samadhi is just that interest in the mind, the qualities of the mind. What is a beautiful, stable, clear, open-hearted mind, and what is a mind that's not that, right? And then the most subtle level is also on the level of mind, but the subtle level of the mind, when, when there's more stability and momentum in our practice, we get a sense of the underlying view or attitude, like taking things personally. But, you know, we're always taking things personally, but when the practice has some momentum, we notice that, and we notice moments when the mind has a more, you know, it's seeing things in a more, like just the activity of nature, including our own thoughts. But what's, you know, how's the mind relating in that more subtle way? What view is operating? What way of framing experience is there, almost like the water we've been swimming in or the air we've been breathing, but now we see it or sense it? Oh, this is how the subtle mind is shaping the moment, coloring in subtle ways. So just like different frequencies, that's the practice. And one set of instructions that Shelley and I work with a lot are just these four, and I'll leave them with you tonight. And maybe after the precept and refuge chanting, uh, you could just remember these four, and, and Shelley and I will be reminding you, but the first instruction is to value relaxation. Really just inviting it in, like at any time, a softening, a trusting, a relaxing, a settling. Like that's just a basic good instinct we want to deepen that value. Is it okay to soften? Can it be okay to relax? And me just inviting certain places in the body that might be chronically a place where we hold tension. And then the second one, uh, instruction is to remember to recognize the present moment. So to be interested. Oh, it's like this now. This is what is being known. So even now we can remember to recognize, oh yeah, it's like this now. Sitting or hearing Mark or whatever your experience is, is being known. And the third is to continue doing the second, <laughs> right? Because it's slightly different energy to remember to recognize the present moment. And then the third is to sustain that remembering. So related, but slightly different mental, spiritual muscle to sustain, to not forget, to keep it in mind, the present moment. And then the, the fourth, not all the time, but every once in a while to just check that underlying attitude or mood or view, just to start training the mind to be interested with what we tend not to notice because we take it for granted. Like whatever frame I'm operating with, there's this, that unconscious presumption where that's me. But now we want to recognize, no, no, that's just a, that's just a subtle frame that's operating. What's the frame? Is the mind taking things personally? Or is it seeing it more just as the activity of nature? Or however you can kind of prompt interest. So I'll just go through it again. So invite relaxation or value relaxation. Don't demand it, but just appreciate relaxation. Remember to recognize the present moment. Learn how to sustain that interest in the present moment, continuity. And every once in a while, learn how to get interested in the underlying attitude, mood, the way the mind is framing experience, the way the mind is relating, taking it personally or not, 